afternoon and welcome to Using Music and Movement to Develop Early Literacy. Thank you for spending your Saturday with us. We hope that the presentation inspires you to think outside the box and to have a little fun while we're teaching our students. Uh, my name is Peggy Gutierrez and a little bit of history of my professional career. I've taught high school math and third grade and I taught a year of music and I'm currently a kindergarten teacher at Crawford Elementary. Good afternoon and welcome. My name is Susana Garza and I have taught for 14 years. I've done pre-K, kindergarten first, second, and currently working as a kindergarten teacher with Ms. Gutierrez and Ms. Reyes at Crawford Elementary. That's why. My name is Crystal Reyes. I taught kindergarten for six years and I am currently teaching second grade. I want to let you know that this same presentation is a condensed version of a presentation that the, um, the owner of Teaching Illuminations, Ms. Norma Sua, and I and our counselor and Dr. Medrano presented at UTSA. It's the same, it's the same one. Uh, read it, sing it, move it. Also, this is part of my student workload as I pursue a master's in education focusing on educational technology. Okay, a little bit more about our school. We are located here in Edinburgh, um, Edinburgh uh, CISD. And as you know, if you're currently teaching or you're uh, studying to be a teacher, it's very important to always keep in mind the students that are sitting in your classrooms. <coughs> well, who are they? Right? What are their demographics? What are they dealing with at home? Right? What do we need to know about them in order to be able to teach them, to reach them? As far as our school is concerned, we have 700 students. 91% uh, um, of them are economically disadvantaged. So that's something you really want to uh, pay attention to. 53% of them are bilingual. And if you plan to teach here in Edinburgh or you're teaching in Edinburgh, you know that this is basically what you're also dealing with uh, the students that you have in your uh, classroom. <coughs> We want to always keep in mind who our targeted students are through the theory. Today the theory you're learning by Ms. Norma Sua is called Read It, Sing It, Move It. As you know, when you're teaching something, you want to say it more than once and in different ways. And this is the theory, uh, one strategy in order to uh, make sure you're targeting it more than once. When you read a certain text, sing the text, move the text in the brochure, it said this is going to be an interactive, interactive um, session in which you will try. Um, and you will see that you can use this with any child, anytime, with any text. You're going to see videos of uh, myself using it at home with my three-year-olds. You're going to see Ms. Garza's kindergarten class and my second grade class. Very different, they're at different levels, but um, all using the same strategy. Read it, sing it, move it. Music and movement is going to be our tool to target fluency and comprehension. We're familiar with the words fluency, right? Sometimes we time students, right? Okay, let's see how you can read, which is great. We want to know the rate and we want to know the accuracy, but unfortunately what happens, we skip prosody, intonation, how are they reading it, are they reading the dialogue, do they understand, which is directly linked to comprehension. Are they understanding what they're reading? We have very beautiful readers, right? We tell them, wow, you read beautifully. What was it about? And they're kind of like, I have no idea, right? And that's not what we want. We want them to read fluently, but comprehend. And we're good, that's where the move, it, uh, the move it step of the theory uh, comes into play. So we're going to be targeting fluency and comprehension. We're going to read it, sing it and move it. Do you know what to do with those words? What do they mean? Okay, um, you have some notepads, milk papers, we have maybe a little fish on your table. We're going to have you be the student, right, in the session. In a classroom, we usually teach like this. We present a word. Okay, boys and girls, this is our vocabulary word. That's it, right? And then you give instructions. I want you to pretend, as a student, that you're listening to your teacher give instructions, and I want you to write down how you feel listening to these instructions. 
You're going to be writing down how you feel while you listen to the instructions of the vocabulary word back. I think uh, music can tell us a lot about memory, but maybe three of the big things uh, I would uh, describe as uh, the emotion, uh, the, big, the big head words would be emotion, 
uh, accuracy and knowledge encoding. So the role that emotion plays in memories, uh, the accuracy of memories, and the way in which uh, knowledge can be encoded uh, into memory using music. So with respect to the first one, uh, we've had many, many uh, anecdotal accounts by now of people in old age homes or in the Alzheimer's unit of a hospital who have forgotten almost everything about their lives. They've forgotten their name, perhaps, the name of a spouse, what year it is, but they still remember music from when they were teenagers. You go in and you start playing the music that was around when they were 14 years old. They perk up, they'll sing along. Many, many hundreds of reports like these. And we all know that when that song comes on the radio that you haven't heard since high school, you're right there along with it. You're singing along. You remember all these nuances of it. And really what this is about, I don't think it's a special property of music, other than that we really have an emotional reaction uh, to the music that we hear during that part of our life for a separate set of issues, which I'll come to in a minute. But the idea uh, about memory, the big story of memory is revealed by musical memory, is that you tend to remember those things that you care about or that you have some deep emotional uh, connection with. It can be a positive emotion, it can be negative, but there and as most of the time, when the students come in and you're going over the vocabulary words, one day, the next day, okay, who remembers the word from yesterday? Backflip. <laughs> but if you put on, if, if they come in singing the song, oh, that you did learn, but what about the words? You know, the music, if you involve that music, singing the days of the week, the seasons, anything, that they will remember and keep on, you know, uh, including it in their everyday life. Our next uh, point is of our strategy is the movement part, okay? And we're not necessarily just talking about the PE time, because a lot of these kids do have PE time, but what we're trying to incorporate is movement in the classroom. So a lot of the times, us as professionals, we want, okay, you need to come in, you need to be quiet, do your work. And that's all we do. They go to the cafeteria, they eat their lunch, and what do they do? No recess, no nothing, just sit down, no talking. They come back to the, and it's the same pattern. They go home, and what do they do? Straight to the video game, to TV. There's no movement. We need to include the kids with movement. Now we're going to see a short video on physical education. Physical education uh, is using total physical response. PE is the only time in school we get to be active, learn to move, and get fit. We used to have PE every day, and now we have it only once a week, if at all. I know you want us to study, but we need to move too. When we sit too much, we can't concentrate. Adults should remember that we are kids, and that too much sitting isn't healthy. If we were more active, we would learn better. We, we need, need more, more PE. PE. Hi, I'm Dr. Tom McKenzie. Physical education is the main source of physical activity for children during the school day. Parents and other adults, including teachers and school board members, play important roles in ensuring that children have regular access to physical education and that children get enough physical activity. Here are some facts. Health authorities recommend children get at least 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity daily. Most children do not get enough. And sedentary living is one of the most challenging public health problems. Physical inactivity is the fourth leading cause of death, and sedentary children are at risk for overweight, obesity, and other chronic diseases. Meanwhile, children are in school for over six hours a day, nine months a year, for 13 years and most of this time, they are forced to sit. Also, he goes on saying that uh, they, the majority of the students need from 130 to 150 minutes of physical movement a week. And most of the time, the students, one day they go to the library, one day they go to music, so they're left with how many days? Three, right? And then besides that, we have them in our classrooms, don't move, 
sit down, do your work. A lot of the things that we do also is we do our side words. There's a resource, uh, uh, Heidi Songs. She's real good about color words, number words, type of words, and it's all about movement. She does the word, she does the movement, and they're singing. And it's just like one minute thing, and the kids are moving and singing, and they're learning academically. So it all has to connect. But the physical movement is there because all learners, of course, learn through the reading, singing, and moving. Also, if you have the little ones, you know they can't stay sitting down for a long time. They get antsy and they're not paying attention anymore. So when you see that in your classrooms with your students, teachers, uh, right now, you're going to see, okay, it's time for them to take a break. You're looking at their gestures, kind of like right now, we're almost ready for a break. And woo up, we're going to do it. We're going to get up and, and uh, read it, sing it, and move it in a minute. And so that's when you take your break, right? You're teaching, okay, let's take a step. You know, stand up. Let's do, if you're doing kinder or the early childhood, okay, let's count. Now let's kick the, let's kick the, skip counting or whatever it is. Because also, what happens when you move? Your blood starts flowing, right? It goes right to your brain and you're more receptive to learning. And that's what we want to do. We want, we want to make sure that if they're not going to PE, you're going to have to give them some kind of physical activity and this theory will give it to you with many different texts. So really quick, we're just going to go over the uh, multi uh, multiple um, intelligences, the research phase, and then we'll go on through our videos. The first one is the auditory development, which is school-age children seem to have the acoustic details available to them, and they are able to attend to those details. Auditory development in this final stage involves learning to use different details, flexibility with changes, and listening conditions, and acquiring the practice needed to make speech perception and automatic process. Our next intelligence, language, low social economic status children. There is a significant decrease of vocabulary, phonological awareness and syntax as compared to their higher social economic counterparts. Whereas average children possess a 3,000 word repertoire of vocabulary, low social economic children have a 500 word or less range of available to them. And that's what we're seeing right now with our kids, that vocabulary, they're coming in with the 500 uh, words. Most which, of them. Most of them. Most of them. Remember, our economically disadvantaged student was what percentage? Does anyone remember? 91% of our students are falling under here. The low socioeconomic um, children are coming in with 500 words or less. 91% of those students are in our classroom. That's our, the makeup of our classroom. So is that something to keep in mind? Yes. yes. Can we do read it, sing it, move it for vocabulary words? Yes. And a lot of the times also at home, it's not only at the social, low social economic uh, students. You see where the parents no longer eat with their children and then there's no communication. Mm -hmm. They go straight to the TV, oh, don't bother me, mm -hmm. you know? So it's everybody across the board that it's affected. Our next one is the kinesthetic, which is a total physical response. It's a style in which students carry out a physical activity rather than listening to a lecture or watching a demonstration. But in a little bit more connected. Mm -hmm. Children at the early sta literacy stage develop most of the major learning mod modalities through kinesthetic practice. Mus musical. In musical, singing has been proven to assist students with speech difficulties, pronunciation, and projection. Singing increases, increases confidence in pronouncing words and acquiring new vocabulary. It also provides non-threatening opportunities to open, openly express ideas, feelings, and emotions while increasing fluency and privacy. Chants, beats, and rhythms attached to learning produce increased levels of recall. And this would be your GT student. Most GT students are musically intelligent. And this is where the singing comes in. We know that 91% of our, or most of our, our population is here, but we can't forget about the ones who are here. And that's when you challenge them through the sing it uh, step of the theory. And next we have the creativity. Music can create a world of imagery that stimulates a child's creativity. A box can become a drum, a stick can be transferred into a horn, or a broom could become a dance partner. Children make up songs or give you words to old songs for pure enjoyment or to convey a message. As we said before, we can use this with any child, 
any text, any time. The first example you're going to see with my three-year-old in his bedroom with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Oh, but he doesn't go to daycare. So all of this is just home. You can try this with your nieces, nephews, grandchildren, so on and so forth. The first step is to read it. Here he's going to try to read it. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. And this one with an S. Star. Star. With an H. How? How?
the back row. Looking over here, please. Now we're going to chant. Ready and go. One. Go! 
Sometimes you heard no a day. Friday? It, it depends when everyone do fluency. Uh -huh. Wait, usually not on Friday. No, no. no. it will no, probably Thursday because Friday we do testing. So Friday. Monday is too soon, right? Monday you would introduce the vocabulary. So Great right. question. Thank you for asking that. Okay. Monday you would do vocabulary. Okay. What does shaggy mean? You know, the first the first read that you do. Uh -huh. I, okay. What does shaggy mean? Okay. Well, you know, I have uh, little YouTube videos of bully mammoths and say, okay, that's shaggy hair, boys and girls. How do you think it would feel? Right. Okay. Who can come up? And this is what we're gonna do, right? Exactly the way we're teaching. Uh -huh. We're all gonna try it. We're gonna and stand up and we're, we're going to give each other um, ideas of what we can do to move it to show that we understand comprehensible vocabulary. So it's okay, shaggy. Okay, shaggy would be long, it moves, it flows, and we incorporate those vocabulary. That we do practice. And of course, we uh, show different types of music. If, if you want to go ahead and take a minute to look at your packet at this time, it says read it, sing it, move it. Oh. And there's different genres there. And Tejano is the one that we really wanted to try. You know how we did the country, achy, breaky heart today? Okay, we wanted to try the Tejano, but we were having trouble finding a tune, and we were, we were challenged. And in the first session, uh, uh, was she a teacher or a certain teacher? One of the participants told us, a head start teacher, Dr. Mike has Spanish or bilingual text, and by, so if you want to write that down, we learn, we're learning all the time. Just teachers like you. Dr. Mike has a lot of um, resources for bilingual music, text, and things of that nature. Dr. Mike. Uh, okay, and so those are other genres. If we change to the next page, so you can challenge your students, you can go over it, you can hear instrumental music, kind of like what we did the country. Okay, move it are different uh, ways you can do it. You can do it like her. For certain things, if you're going to have all 25 do it and they're recording you, you want them to only use your hands, right? Only gestures. But if you're ready to have them full body movements, everyone stands up, let's do, let's do it. You can do that as well. And the, uh, the other uh, pages are for you to make it however you want. If you have space in your classroom, we can make big posters. You, it's your class. If you don't get it. Do you have the Spanish? No, that's a great question. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I, I should know better than that. Yeah, we just do that. It's true. Right. We had a participant who was, um, well, she was a coloring, so she was already working on her little um, neck label, if you will, so that, you know, all she has to do is cut it out and laminate it, and she has it prepared for that activity. So just adding some color to it, or putting it on colored paper, anything to make it fun and exciting, change it every month for the season or whatever, you can uh, just make it more exciting so that they look forward to doing it. And that's a great question on the bilingual one. We uh, team teach at our school. So one teacher will do the English language arts, mm -hmm. which is us, and then the other teachers do the Spanish language arts. So that's something that, if that teacher, uh, I want to take a minute, I'm sorry. As we said in the beginning, the owner of Teacher Eliminations is here, Ms. Norma Sua. Uh, if, if you wanna... uh, the reason that uh, we decided to design this was because of the population that we serve. I am the TLI coach there at Stanford Elementary, and one thing that we did see was that we are deficient in vocabulary. So we have to think of creative ways on how we can get fun back into the classroom. Because you know what? It is a childhood. It is their childhood, and the more that we are uh, star geared, the more we're taking that away. We're taking away play, we're taking away fun, and we're taking away creativity. When we were younger, we used to create a lot of things. We used to play a lot of games. Now that's, that's something of the past. And so I want to bring that back. How can we bring that back? By doing things like this, but of course still to keeping the teaks in mind and all the things that we still need to teach. So how can we blend the two? All of us have the same theory of play, and exploration, so bringing all that together into the school is something that's one of uh, the initiatives that I have for the school. So this is one of the techniques. Uh, again, I wanted to expose children to di different genres of music because if you come from a Spanish-speaking home, you're pretty much gonna listen to Tejano and you don't know anything about blues, you don't know anything about classical music, so you know what, I want to incorporate the music teacher as well. So here, I use the music teacher, I use the coach, I use uh, the classroom teachers, and all of us have merged together to uh, build the whole child. So what they get in the classroom, they get in music, and then they get in PE. And that goes for high frequency words and everything that we do throughout the school. So 
this is why we wanted to blend all of these different things because you know what maybe there's a home that they come from Mexico they don't listen to country music but you can expose them to all the different types of music so this is what we wanted to incorporate throughout the school as well so um, I know that you're gonna enjoy it my, my, my hopes and our hopes are that you use it come Monday and, and you put your twist on it we can give you our email we'd love to see some of you recording your students, and yes, I apologize for not having the Spanish component, but only because just time got away from me. But definitely that was something that we will, will do. We will do. <coughs> so let's go ahead and let's uh, see how we're going to uh, finish it. Now we're going to put it into practice. And it is something that it's, you got to see the final products. You got to see the finished um, product. But this is actually something that you do, like she mentioned, in steps throughout the week. Um, here's a book that Mrs. Azua has, it's called My Book of Letter Nursery Rhymes, and she has the letter of the week and then a little coin, and so we're going to use this as for our activity. Um, step one is what? Read it. Read it. So we're going to read it together. Um, you would have the text, you would of course do the um, pointing, the finger association, or at least their eyes, and so will you read it with me please? Yes. Okay. Gertz, Grandpa, Gregory. Grew whiskers past his knee. They grew around and around. They grew down to the ground. Good golly, Gert declared. Gramps got a goofy beard. So Grandpa Gwendolyn shaved Grandpa's chin. Now, as Ms. Azua mentioned, uh, many students may not be familiar with just these names. Gertz, Gwendolyn. And so you would take it a little bit at a time and introduce the word, you know, Gertz is somebody's name. Let's all say Gertz. Gertz. And who are we talking about? Are we talking about Gertz? No, we're talking about her, her grandfather. Gertz is a girl and her grandfather. What is her grandfather's name? Gregory. Gregory. So we would first kind of read it and kind of dissect it so that we understand that what it is that we're reading. Um, of course, you could spend two days on this or you could break it up into different parts of the day. I find that if we do it in the morning, they go to PE and they come back, I do it again like it's the first time. And so those of them that have not gotten it, they're being exposed to it multiple times throughout the day. I'll do it again before they leave me. We'll do it again right before we line up for something. It's just that constant repetition and opportunity for them to be able to master and feel comfortable with. So then the next step is what? Season. And I know that sometimes this is the most challenging part because you have to think of a tune. Um, in years past, I would use the same tune for everything and it worked. And I thought that maybe they would get confused because it's the same tune, but different words. But I would kind of forget like where the words would go and they would tell me and I'm like, oh, you remember? And they can distinguish between what um, topic we were on that they could sing the song for me. As I've um, had time to prepare more, I've gotten to expand my <coughs> repertoire of tunes. And so nursery rhymes are great, but you'll notice like some of them are the same, like ABC and Twinkle Twinkle Little Star are the same. Mm -hmm. So this is again where you can expose them to the different genres, um, where you can kind of hear a song and you may be in the car and go, oh, that's great. I can put these words in that. And it, and it works, it does. It's just a matter of kind of tweaking it. Um, for this story, I came up with a tune. I'm sure we've all heard of it. I honestly don't know the name of it, but I think it's associated with maybe bar mitzvahs. And it's that. Da, 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 da. because I got to learn how they learn to sing, how you teach them a song. And you know, there's different parts to it, but really you just break it down. 
So I would start with Gerd's grandpa, Gregory. So I say that part fast. So can you sing that with me? <laughs> Gerd's grandpa, Gregory, grew whiskers past his knee. Grew whiskers past his knee. They grew round and round. They grew round and round. They grew down to the ground. They grew down to the ground. And so I'd stop right there and just practice that part until they felt comfortable with it. And so once they mastered that, I might um, omit singing with them, maybe a line or two or a word if it's really kind of hard and they're having trouble, but they like it and they're trying and you can see that they want to. And if anything, you do it again. You do it multiple times throughout the day, throughout the week, so that they have opportunities to master it. And they're singing it and they're humming it and they, they're owning it. Um, so you do the whole song. So then it would be, good golly, Gert declared. Good golly, Gert declared. Gramps got a goofy beard. Gramps got a goofy beard. So Grandma Gwendolyn. So Grandma Gwendolyn. Shaved Grandpa's chin. Shaved Grandpa's chin. Are you ready to try it all together? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't believe I'm singing in front of y'all. I never thought that this day would come. <laughs> You're doing good. Thank you for encouraging. Yeah. Okay, ready? Gert's grandpa, Gregory, grew whiskers past his knee. They grew round and round. They grew down to the ground. Good golly, Gert declared, grandpa, Scott, a goofy beard, so brown, wrinkled in shape, grandpa's chin. And there would be our song. And so you can try one to practice it before to make sure it kind of fits. But like she said, if you have a GT student who's willing to try it, sometimes they'll do the work for you. Mm -hmm. And then they present it and you're so proud of them and they're so proud to share. So as you practice it and they know that this is coming, they start doing what you're doing. They listen to songs, they start picking popular songs and sometimes it fits, it really does. All right, so we did step one, which was read it. We did step two, which was Sing, sing it. it. So what is step three? Move it. Move it. And to me, this is the funnest part because this is where you solicit from them what they want to do to understand that word. So, Gert's grandpa. What do you think we should do for grandpa? Okay. We have one option here. Abuelo. 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 But what action, what motion could we do to be grandpa? Like a cat. <laughs> We would say, Gertz is a person, so I might go like, Gertz, Grandpa, Gregory, because that's a person's name. So we could put those three motions together. Gertz, Grandpa, Gregory, okay? And you can include them in this so that they, again, feel ownership. You can kind of see what they're familiar with. You might have to kind of give it to them the first couple of times because they don't have the experience of maybe some of those words. Okay, the next line is grew whiskers past his knee. Who wants to give me something for that one? Whiskers, whiskers, whiskers past his knee. Not past his knee. Past his knee. Yes, yeah, so notice how Miss Reyes put her hands and kind of scooped down so that we would know past his knee. And uh, those are the little details that when our students become star testers that they need to understand. Not to his knee, but past yes. his knee. And so we would put, again, I'd start from the beginning and I'd go from there to the end of that sentence. So will you all stand up, please? And let's do that first line together. <laughs> Time to move it and move it. it. That's right. And I know you all can move it because I saw some of you all when we put it on. We'll read it together, the first line, the first sentence, and we will do the motion or movement together. Ready? Gers, Grandpa, Gregory, grew whiskers past his knees. All right, look how powerful that is. You will go home, and if you hear anything with whiskers, you're going to think of Gers, Grandpa, Gregory. <laughs> you're going to remember his beard, because you have a mental image now that it went past his, his knee. knee. If you do this several times throughout the day, 
they will come in telling you the next morning, Miss, his beard was past his knee. And you will see that this has become a learned word for them that they didn't know. Um, do you want to do the next one while we're standing up together? What, does anybody have any suggestions where they grew round and round? Whiskers are going to grow round and round. So how would they look if they went round and round? So they grew round and round. No, whiskers. <laughs> they grew down to the ground. They grew down to the ground. If you're young, you can touch the floor. <laughs> <laughs> because we can touch the floor, we might have to make it. Okay. And then good golly. What would y'all do for good golly? That is like an exclamation, right? Good golly. Good golly. Good, I don't like that. Good golly. Now that's not a, kid or a word our kids are going to be familiar with, right? What does good golly mean? So you might give them some examples that translate, that could mean a similar, but now they can learn a new thing. And I always tell them, when you go home, tell your parents, Good golly, Mom. School was wonderful today. And their parents are going to say, what does that mean? And they're like, oh, you know. And so for them to be able to show off to Mom and Dad so that the learning continues at home and hopefully we get feedback from Mom and Dad. You know, they came home saying, good golly. And then you can be like, yes, good. That's what we want. Good golly, Gert declared. And so any suggestions on that? Gert? There, comes out of your oh, mouth. Declare would be your mouth. So, Gert is, of course, the girl, which we had said, us. Uh, so, Gert. If the boy, he would point at a girl, right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think we understand. Now we're just going to put it all together. If you had a number, you can go ahead and get that number now. This is a, another way to have, if you don't want to. Um, have the same students always coming up and doing that. You want to give everyone a chance, and you know how they get their feelings hurt. And, you never pick me. I want to go. Okay, so a fair way to do this would be through. Give me a second. A random selector. If you want to write that down, it's a free app. If you have apps, uh, if you have iPads in your classrooms, let me restart it real quick. Random selector. Make sure you have a number, if possible. I know we ran out of numbers. Does anyone need a number? We have two right here. Does anybody need a number? <laughs> okay. You can put your students' names in here, random name selector, and it tells you the steps. But for this purpose, since we have a lot of people who we don't know their names, um, we're going to put numbers. So if your number gets randomly selected, Yay. Yay. you're invited to put it all together for us. Okay, so here we go. Number 12. Number 12. You can come up here. Number 12, please. Who's number 12? Yeah. No mind. Number 12. 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 Number Number Is that you, Miss Lee? The bilingual teacher. Three, nine, do we pick one more? Okay. Thirteen. Thirteen. Oh, you see? Together. Together. That's it. Okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna help you. We're gonna just do all three steps of what you just learned. Read it. We'll do it. Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, so first we're going to read it. Everyone <laughs> tell them. Tell them. One, two, three. Read it. Gert and Grandpa Gregory grew whiskers past his knee. They grew round and round. They grew down to the ground. Good golly, Gert declared. Grandpa's got a beard. So Grandma Gwendolyn shaved Grandpa's skin. Okay, I'm going to be a teacher for just 
just a second. Remember, our audience is here. So when the teacher has a book, right, you want to show it to your students, and we don't want to give them our back. So students, can you just slightly turn your shoulders so that we can see your beautiful faces? <laughs> awesome. Okay, next step on three. One, two, three. Sing it. Your words are teacher. I think we should all sing it. Okay, we all sing it. Okay, you ready? Gerd, Grandpa, Gregory, Drew, Whiskers, has his knee, they grew around and round, they grew down to the ground. Good golly, Gerd, make their ground start. A goofy beard, go ground on, when they'll then shake Grandma's chin. Very nice. Last one, on three. One, two, three. Move it. Okay, we can put our magic books down. All right, we can move it. Uh, one, two, three. Girls, grandpa. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay.
enrichment because of what's happening. What's the main thing that's happening here? Fluency. Fluency, fluency over and over and over again in just different ways that you could present it and that's really what we want. Why? Because we want to transfer everything to one, I always say that all the time, transferring knowledge from one grade to the next but more than anything else because in the upper grades we are tired of seeing children that are in third, fourth, and fifth that do not know how to read. It is an injustice to education, it is a slap in the face to educators, and it is just not right. Because if it was your child, I guarantee you that you would not appreciate that lack of potency through your curriculum. So we have to get creative people. They're cutting our budgets, they're cutting everything from us, our creativity, now we can't have stuff up. Everything is, it's like they're tying our hands. But you know what? Teachers, power teachers need to be one step ahead. And it's by doing and creating these things where we can still have fun and you can still do it for free. And we do it with the passage. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you, Tim. Thank you because you're the ones who are doing all of our, we are doing it. You are doing all the hard work with the students. It shows your dedication for being here today. So thank you in case you get one of our children, all of our children in your classes. We appreciate all that you do. And uh, we'll reap what we